first of all, I hate to say it, but I'm looking up right now this expanded 12-team format for this year's playoffs because before I give my hot take, I need to know exactly how the playoffs are set up, which is the top two division winners will receive a bye, right, to mm-hmm. the second round, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. while the third best division winner and the best three teams among non-division winners will play in three-game series for a place in the division series. The worst division winner will face the bottom wild card team while the other two take on each other. So the Cardinals have to be one of the top six teams in the National League to make the playoffs. So just be, so that we have that uh, set there, because I think, look, even I was confused. We've all been confused because they were going to go 12 teams. Was it going to be 14? Yeah. That was being bargained. The owners wanted 14. I think down the road we will get 14, but the players said, hey, we'll give you 12 now. I'm sure five years from now the players will go to 14, but they want something in return. So I was looking at Vegas win totals. I prefer that over power rankings. They have the Cardinals at 86 on the Action Network. And then if I'm looking at National League teams above them, Dodgers, 97.5. The next team for National League, because a bunch of American League teams after that, Brewers, 90. Braves, 89. A banged-up Mets pitching staff, 87. Phillies, 86.5. Padres, 86.5. That's six teams. So if you look at Vegas, the Cardinals at 86. They're right there, and the Giants are also at 86. So they're right on the cusp, Vegas-wise, of making the playoffs. If if the win totals played out, we all know they won't. But that would have the Cardinals out of the playoffs. They would be the seventh best team in the National League. Them and the Giants would fall just short of the Phillies and the Padres. I wonder if they had a healthy Flaherty, if their win total would be projected as higher. I, I mean, I get, I get, no, I is. get the concern. He's your ace, and you know, hopefully he'll be back. He he doesn't think it's a big deal. We have to wait and see. Um, I, I still think they can they they can make moves. They got. I, I, I've always wanted to see Libertor anyway. Um, at some point this season as a starter, I think I think that's a legitimate concern as a starting rotation based on the fact you have guys coming off injury. If you, you know a couple guys like Bueno who's up there in years. Um, so you have to wait and see. I just think they're going to be good, and maybe that's the fanboy in me. Oh, no! but uh, I think they're going to be better than eighty-six wins. I can see. Yeah, I mean, would it surprise me one bit if they win eighty-eight games? I think the bigger issue, though, you would think with an expanded playoff format. I mean, the Cardinals almost always get in anyway, but these other teams, the Dodgers, look—they always spend. They're really good. They have a great farm system, also. But look at these other teams. To me, I would put the Brewers also above the Cardinals in the National League Central. And I say this because, look, the Cardinals have a better lineup. The Cardinals have better overall position players. One thing I think probably where the Cardinals are slept on is how good defensively and base running of a team they are. And that's not sexy, but that wins games over the course of 162. Cardinals, in my opinion, better lineup than Milwaukee. Milwaukee's rotation is freaking stacked. And they have two of the best bullpen arms in all of baseball in Josh Hader and Devin Williams. So over the course of 162 with a banged up rotation for the Cardinals to start, I would also put the Brewers above the Cardinals in the Central. That doesn't mean the Brewers are going to win the division, but I do think on paper... I don't think they got enough offense. Well, could they have enough? And They could. And I think the Cardinals are going to be better than people expect. I think that outfield is going to have a huge... I mean, the guys at the corners, you kind of expect big numbers. I get that. Will DeYoung bounce back? I think he has a good chance to do that. But I think the guys in the outfield um, are going to have big years. And I agree with you with the base running part, which kind of flies under the radar. I think guys like O'Neal and Bader, if Bader's better offensively, he's on the base paths more. I think these guys could really wreak havoc on the base paths with their speed, which I don't think we saw a ton of last year. Um, hopefully we'll see more of it this year. And, Cam, I want your take. I just want to say, though, I think you maybe— sure? No, I do. Oh. But I think a more interesting conversation is look at the teams ahead of them and what they did to try to make the playoffs. Again, we all know Dodgers. Okay, Braves are coming off the World Series, and they, they basically flip Freddie Freeman for a younger version of Freddie Freeman. 
they're still pretty amazing how really they did good. that surgically. Here's another thing. The Mets, even with a banged up DeGrom and a banged up Scherzer, Steve Cohen will literally spend, if he had to, he would spend $400 million this year to try to win the World Series. I'm not saying that's a good thing. It's very interesting, but they're going for it. The Phillies just in the offseason signed Schwarber and Castellanos to go along with Bryce Harper. That's a good team, and they're, they're trying to win. The Padres just go ahead and they get Sean Manaya. And then the team for win totals that the Cardinals are tied with the Giants, how many games did they win last year? 106, whatever it was. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a that's a really tough eight teams. Two of those teams most likely are not going to make the playoffs. Right? That's the math? Yeah. Two of those teams won't make the playoffs. <sighs> hmm, hmm, hmm. What did you do? Was it a question to me? No, I just think... That on paper, you're thinking, yeah, the Cardinals should be really good. But then you look at the teams above them, and yeah. there's only six playoff spots. And if if the Vegas win totals played out perfectly, and by the way, they won't, but they would have the St. Louis Cardinals and the San Francisco Giants, both teams that made the playoffs last year. One made the wild card. The other won a division with like 106 wins. They would not be in. Let me ask you this. Is there a team in the mix from Vegas that has a crappy payroll? Mm. The Marlins, 77 and a half wins. I don't think they have a great payroll. The Cleveland Guardians. No, they don't. They don't have Cleveland Guardians have a 76 Guardians. and a half win total, God. and they've spent like four bucks. What, what's the Mariners? Mariners are well, supposed I know, to be I know pretty good. AL, but. So the Mariners have an 85 and a half, which is basically the same as the Cardinals, essentially. Okay. I think they're a sleeper. I think I think they actually, I'll give you a hot take right now. Oh! I think that they beat We need the, one. I think they beat the Astros and won the AL West. So. This conversation we're having, I was driving around yesterday, and Bernie Miklas had a great segment, you can go to 590thefan.com, where he went through all of the power rankings. Basically, all these different writers, all these websites, but folks that, that know baseball. And he, he read, where do they have the Cardinals? And it was very similar. It was like, let's say between 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 in Major League Baseball, which I think maybe that's a little low, but I think the baseball world looks at the Cardinals as a good, not great team. But they're spinning like a good, great team, right? The Cardinals? Yeah. They're always right around <clears throat> 160 ish. Always in the same realm. Always the same yeah. bucket, as Mo would say. Yeah. They're, they're always, I, and I get that. I just think defense and base running are more important than people give them credit for. And that kind of stuff flies under the radar. You play defense, you're going to make your pitchers better. So, yeah, does that rotation have some question marks, you know, based on health? I get it. But we saw it last year. You can put other guys in there, guys that you thought might have been done, and all of a sudden they're trying to throw ground balls and put the, keep the ball in play, not going for strikeouts, and all of a sudden their numbers are good. And to me, the big, the big hurdle for the Cardinals last year was the offense was just stagnant for the first half, and we oh, saw in yeah. the second half what it could be. Now, there's a difference between what it could be and actually going out there and doing it but I think they will this year. I think they're going to be better than folks give them credit for. So you think the big boys, Mo, DeWitt, all of them, are, if they're looking at that, they're like, oh, 86 wins. We're going to have Mo on tomorrow, by the way. Yeah. All right, cool. Do you think they're looking at the, uh, the projections and saying, yeah, okay, this is that's kind of where we should be? Or are they probably no, like, I, well, no, like no. we're bringing in guys, we're signed him, we're spending a lot of money, we should be 90, 91 wins? So they, in my opinion, I know the Cardinals <laughs> – try to be efficient with every dollar they spend on payroll and everything. That's why they don't go out when there's a chance the guy they have can be as good as the guy they're going to spend a lot of money on, and that guy that they spend a lot of money on has a chance of being a bust and, and being a waste of money. They're, they're more conservative with their funds. So they're not always going to upgrade, well, we can, we can do this. I think they have a team that they feel can win. My guess would be if the uh, – if the starting rotation takes on some water, they will go out and, and do something. But I think right now they feel they have enough yeah. to be a winning ball club. See, that scares me, though. And I usually offer the Cardinals the benefit of the doubt, but they waited too long last year. I know, and I can say it worked out in air quotes, because they made the wild card. But if they even added a they, half— They won 17 in a row. <laughs> well, they won 17 in a row, but they— no, they, you can't count on that. I understand. They got to disagree. yeah. They got to a one game playoff where you're rolling the dice, fifty fifty, and you're facing 
Max Scherzer. You could make the argument that even if you went and got Wade LeBlanc a month earlier. Last year, the Cardinals lost the division. I believe it was late May when the Brewers went. The Brewers made that trade for Willie Adamas, and they went crazy. The Brewers, for about six weeks, were unbelievable. And that was exactly around the time, if you remember, the Cardinals, in about a week or ten days, had injuries to Flaherty and Michaelis. And so the Cardinals lost the division, despite the 17-game the win streak. They lost it there in June. In late May and June, when they took a dive, the Brewers went crazy, and the Brewers went so up in the division. What were they up? 11 games, 11 and a half, whatever it was. The Cardinals could not come back from that, despite a 17-game win streak. So if your rotation is already cratering before the season started with Flaherty and a bulk guy in Alex Reyes, Somebody else is getting hurt, by the way. You think you think Wayno, Michaelis, Dak Hudson, and Matts, you think those guys are all going to make 33 starts? Hell no. And I will say, in, in fairness and honesty, when the Cardinals got Hap and Lester, I kind of thought it was waving the white flag, hey, we just need some arms to get us to the finish line. Like, yes, I'm a rights holder and a fanboy, <laughs> but I didn't say they're going to they're gonna rattle off 17 straight wins. But it worked out beautifully. It didn't work out as well like you always say. If it's a one-game playoff, you're you're rolling the dice. I, I do think Libertor is a guy who I think everyone that's a Cardinal fan would like to see and believes can have success. So if you're talking about rotation depth, you look at him and you think, you know, if he's a piece we can use, do we need to act now? But I will agree, right now there are legitimate questions with where they are in terms of injury. Um, somebody's chirping me for the chair. So he goes, is that a door or somebody's chair? And he's like, holy hell. I go, it's my chair. Squeaky. I was, I was squeaking. He's like, bring WD-40. And I'm like, I didn't bring it this time. But he's like, oh, you guys are good anyway. So that was kind of nice in that. But the FO has to be more productive than they were in 21 if things go sideways. The FO. Like, I look at front office. I, yeah. I have the Cardinals not losing a game this season. Now, maybe that's too optimistic, but that's how... That's my fanboy ranking. Fan Steven Matz look good. Most of the... Ooh, I do think they'll look. Steven Big Matz. Big season ahead. Steven no, Matz in front of the, the best defense, arguably, of all time in a great pitcher's park. Doesn't surprise me one bit if, if Steven Matz puts up. That's another thing. These pitchers, if, if you're thinking the Cardinals pitching staff, okay, you don't love the depth and rotation. They have a lot of nice bullpen pieces. But you, you play half your games at Bush in front of literally a historic defense. They catch the ball. Yeah, they they're going to make a lot of outs. They're going to roll a lot they of cover ground. Balls. That's why five they... gold glovers. How yeah. many dudes in this defense? How many dudes at the end of their career will have a gold glove? Yachty obviously didn't win last year. Has a ton. Dylan Carlson might win a gold glove before his career is over. So, I mean, do the math there. Literally, shortstop might be the only position where you don't have a player who, at some point in his career, will win a gold glove. I still think he's a plus defender. He is. But a lot of people are like, oh, he's, I think he's a good defensive player. How do you get? How do they determine who gets a Gold Glove? Like, how, do, how does that all break down? So that now it's computerized based on the defensive metrics. It used to be, hey, if the guy can field a little bit and is really good offensively, and we've let's heard get him. him. Like, I, I yeah, allowed, let's yeah. get him a Gold Glove. But mo it used to be a lot by your offensive resume puts you in the conversation, and in some cases puts you over the top. It's a different ball game now. Like when. O'Neal won a gold glove. People are like, you know, how did this guy? Well, because there's all kind of defensive metrics that they go by that, that sees what the average person can't see with their bare eyes. And to be fair to the Cardinals, I do feel like every year we talk about this and they always outperform, especially Pakoda. Don't you feel like Pakoda every year? Oh, every, it's almost like... Every, it's almost a joke. Yeah. Pakoda. Pakoda's always like 74 78. Wins. And the Cardinals... And we can we can chirp them here and there. The Cardinals are always at minimum going to win eighty six. Yeah. I mean, they're always eighty six to ninety ninety one. But I do think this year, Pocota there's a lot always, of good teams. Always put some. Who's this Pocota guy? Do I need to talk to him? Okay, so here's Pocota. Pocota, as of four five, that's yesterday, correct? So, NL Central. This can't be right. See, they have the Reds. I had the, the Cardinals. The Reds shed. Like sixty million dollars in a day, <laughs> yeah, whatever it was, yeah. they traded everyone. Yeah. They have the Reds at eighty wins. They have the Cardinals at seventy nine point two, and that's where Pakoda is always wrong in the Cardinals. Yeah. They are always wrong in the Cardinals. I mean, really, 
The Cardinals are not going to win 79 games. If they do, that is a disaster. Yes. It's not That's good. a horrible year. It's a bad year, isn't it? Hmm. Boy, I don't even want to think about that. Oh, man. One of my outlets is 538. They're a big analytics-based website, and they have us going 500 flat. I don't see it. We would have they. I think they're factoring in like injuries. They think that if we get one more significant starting rotation injury, that could be the. Do blow. they say that? No, they're just trying to play the analytics. Like what's gone, what's happened in the past with these teams, injury history, not solely just based on like I don't know. It's it's all kind of a guess, but they're just going off. I will say kind of stuff. Having Jay Hap in the nest, ready to go, would be a comforting thing. I agree with that a hundred percent. There's going to be another injury. Oh, God, There's yeah. going to be another injury maybe in two weeks. So then you're depending on Verhagen and potentially Libertor right out of the gate. I, lo- I loved Verhagen as your sixth guy. Woodford as your seventh guy. Libertor as your whatever. Sixth, seventh, eighth. I might like Woodford better than Verhagen. Uh, you know, what we've seen, I think there's a lot of upside with that guy. <laughs> yeah, interesting, man. Love is a strong word for Verhagen or Woodford at this point. But I'm saying, yeah. okay, that's that's true. That's fair. But what I'm saying is, okay, I'll say that's life. fanboy talk I'll right there. That's fanboy fan boy talk right there. I know we Charlie. got Mo coming Come on, on tomorrow, Charlie. but I don't even know if Mo loves <laughs> no, no. Charlie Woodford loves everybody. <laughs> no, I was saying, I'll, I'll say like. I like those guys as your sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth starter. Again. It's nice to have Johan Oviedo as your ninth starter, right? Last year, he had to be your fifth starter in the big leagues for a stretch of time when he wasn't ready. That's when you lost the division. I'm not blaming it on him, but again, they they were able to grab certainty. Were they studs? No, but Hap and Lester, even though we all made fun of those moves, they were innings eaters. How about LeBlanc? Big leaguers. They bring this guy in just... Because he throws strikes and can give him some bullpen depth when a when a game gets out of hand and he's in the rotation yeah. and he was you know efficient for a five inning guy, I mean it didn't go well for them and they still got into the the postseason. Dakota Hudson is healthy now. I think people sleep on him. I think he is going to be a very good pitcher. People forget what he did when he was healthy before he got injured. I also think Michaelis when he's healthy is a really solid starter, and he looks like he's really healthy now. Those are middle-of-the-rotation guys. Pretty good in my book. And if Wayno, and I know it's an if, because any player you question at this point in their career, can they do it again? But to me, all indications are Wayno will be good this season. So they have the makings of a decent rotation, even with a guy like Flaherty, you know, starting it where his, his, his situation is kind of in limbo. Uh, Kyle chimes in and goes, the Cardinals have a Jay Happ, but 10-ish years younger in Connor Thomas. But he's not proven. None of these guys are. Tell that he, to Kyle. One of, one of the Kyle, little issues. Kyle, come on. Like, we had uh, Drew Silva on yesterday. He's a smart guy, writes all these power rankings for NBC Sports Edge. And he said that the Cardinals rotation is the worst that he has analyzed since he moved to St. Louis in 1996, which is pretty he, heavy. He, but when you look at these power well, rankings, what is that based I, on? What is that based on? Like I get it, you know, well, you have the Dakota coming off injury, injury coming off. I get yeah. that, you know, Michael is coming off a season where he had injuries. But if those guys are healthy, doesn't that change the whole dynamic? Which is a possibility, right? Oh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna qualify it with this. I think a lot of these writers look at pitching through a strikeout lens, and the Cardinals don't have strikeout guys. They don't have guys that are going to be striking out. 15 batters a game. They're going to have guys that are sinker ball, ground ball guys. And with you have a defense like the Cardinals possess, as Charlie's alluding to, you're going to save a lot of runs. And so I think that's what they're sort of banking on. That, but mean, when it comes to predictions. That's why they get a guy like Matt. Because he fits what they're, you know, they don't want. I mean, if you're going to strike out guys like Hicks that and you're healthy and effective, it's great. But really what they've preached as an organization for a while is pitch a contact. We'll put together a good defense, and we'll have efficient innings, and we'll get you on to the next one. I, and don't get me wrong, I think I like Drew Silva. I think he's a really smart guy. Um, I, I, I just, and I could see the questions, but right now, based on where Flaherty is, we do, it's possible that he comes back and he's fine. I think the rotation can be good 
not the most dire situation I've seen in a long time. But the Brewers rotation is full of monsters. Absolute Throwing that heat. Absolute monsters. Yeah. I, I, What's their payroll like? It's not great. Really? I mean, they're it's not loaded? super high. I would say, I'm guessing. I mean, Christian Yelich is making I'm always, a ton. I'm always curious on payrolls now. Can, did, can Yelich hit anymore? Probably not. I think Andrew McCutcheon was a sneaky good move for them. You know, I, I like McCutcheon, but now he's kind of morphed into like, and I, I don't have his stats handy, but like a 240 guy who will give you 20-plus homers. You know, like. <laughs> yeah, but that's. In that fine, ballpark. That's fine. But, but if Yelich isn't a monster, you know, like he has been, that lineup is going to struggle offensively. And I didn't even did Yelich have a good spring? I didn't even check on that. I look it up. Uh, Geno's chiming in. This pitching staff is light years ahead of 1996. I said that loud because I feel like he texts as loud, you know. <laughs> so Brewers, some sneaky good moves. Some sneaky good moves. Hunter Renfro. I like that. Big time power hitter. Andrew McCutcheon. I know he's been banged up. I feel like in that ballpark, <clears throat> I just don't think he's. He'll the be same pretty guy. dang good. He's been around a while, eh? Yeah. Yep. Pirates. And a lot of different stops, a lot of different venues since Pittsburgh. So Andrew McCutcheon, last year with Philadelphia, 27 bombs, 80 RBIs, <clears throat> only hit 222. 27. 334 on base. So not a great OPS. But I think in that ballpark, if he's healthy, he's going to hit a lot of home runs. Mm, 27 home runs by McCutcheon? Yeah. That's impressive. How I, old didn't, is he? I didn't think he got more than That surprised 20. me, too. Is he 30? 31. He is. He was born in 86. Oh, yeah. Okay. By the way, Yelich, just so you know, went 8 for 30 in spring in 11 games with two extra base hits, no homers. So not not great, but, was you he know. Banged up? He get banged up pretty good? His back's all messed up. Oh, well, that, I mean, that'll did, do it. Even in the field, he didn't look like the same guy. That'll do it. That'll do it. I'm telling you. Uh, all right. Let's go to break. It's 8-12. Let's get, uh, let's get a break in. Let's regroup. We got a lot of stuff to get into anyway, guys. We are going to be back. This is Hot Take Central. Cam Jansen, Jim the Gad Hayes, Charlie Marlowe. We're just doing our thing. No fanboys in here, except for Kyle when he texts in. He's a minor league fanboy and already admitted it. We love you, Kyle. It's all good, baby. We're going to be back. 5-9 the fan, 5-9 the fan.com. <laughs> 